let's talk about science, chemistry and physics in particular. Hi, I am Rachel from Seven and All. I am a second generation homeschooler and I really like making nerdy curriculum videos here on YouTube. So if you like homeschool chats, nerdy curriculum videos and all that kind of stuff, definitely stick around, subscribe, leave me some comments down below so we can continue the conversations that I start. But today is gonna to be just a straightforward video, a look into Apologia's chemistry and physics. I don't know about you guys, but when I was being homeschooled myself, chemistry and physics was my favorite kind of science. I know that that's not really the normal answer. It's like supposed to be people are really into studying animals and nature study and all that, but I'm just not your animal girl. I loved chemistry and physics, um, and we're gonna be using this for the second time, this program, for the second time this coming year. I wanna give you a look inside so you know what to expect. All right, these are the two main pieces of the curriculum. This is a little bit unique in that there isn't a teacher's guide. Everything that you need is going to be in here. They give you like answers for the teacher are going to be in the back of the student text, the supply list, yeah, answer key. All of that stuff is right in this main textbook. So you don't have a teacher's guide and then a student book to juggle. You do have the student notebooking journal. You can find a schedule for how to implement your curriculum inside the student notebooking journal that spreads it out into two days of science per week and takes you through 28 weeks. So this is, this is intended to be a year-long science study at the elementary student level. And all of the Apologia Young Explorers series are intended to be used with multiple ages from kindergarten through sixth grade. Now, if you listen to any mom who has used this program and you know, read these <laughs> chapters with their children, they're going to tell you, if your oldest child is in kindergarten or first grade or even in second grade, don't use chemistry and physics from Apologia um, Young Explorer series. The reality, like we, we all love family style curriculum and multi-age curriculum, but the reality is that some topics are, bet, are more appropriate for particular ages. And this truly is a more appropriate concept and topic for upper elementary than it is for a kindergartner. Not that a kindergartner couldn't join in, they absolutely can, but this isn't something that's specifically targeted at the typical kindergarten level. If you have a <laughs> exceptional five or six year old who is very, very scientifically minded, yes, you know, there are always gonna be exceptional cases, but in general, <laughs> this is not going to be um, something that's gonna work for your very young students. I wanna show you how this works and just give you a little flip through inside. There are 14 lessons. So clearly you're not doing one lesson in a day or even one lesson in a week. There are no tests integrated into this. It is at an elementary level, so you don't necessarily need tests. We have sometimes used the projects from the chemistry and physics journal as a sort of test at the end of a lesson. But I will go more into that but this is designed for the parent to read aloud to the child. As you can look at this, this is not something that you would typically expect. It's, it's written in a very interesting and conversational way, but for most you know, early to mid elementary students, this, isn't gonna be, this could be something that could be a little overwhelming for them to read to themselves. So this is definitely something you're going to want to read aloud to your elementary student. Lots of cool stuff in here. We're beginning just talking about matter. Um, I love this kind of introduction to properties of matter that they give by talking about 20 questions and that famous question, animal, vegetable, or mineral? And then it begins talking about different properties, how we connect this to everyday life through playing I spy and we identify colors or properties of objects. So you will see, this is a text, this is a textbook based science program and a lot of homeschoolers will run away the minute they see a textbook based curriculum of any sort. But I think textbooks get a little bit too bad of a rap and that's maybe based on their history. But this really doesn't deserve the bad rap. You can see that it is very colorful. It's very interesting. Lots of visual images here. We have an image of 
some kids with different emotions as we look at two different loaves of bread um, and think about the science that went into why has one of them risen and the other has not. There are many try this opportunities throughout the texts. So many, in fact, that I would not recommend that you think I'm going to do all of the try this and all of the hands-on activities. I do recommend that as a homeschooling parent using this, before you start your lesson for the week or the day or so on, read a little bit ahead, not so much to understand the concepts. I think the concepts are very simply explained. They're really not above your child's level as long as you're doing this with an upper elementary student. You shouldn't have to do a whole lot of additional explaining. Like in some courses, you can end up having to do a lot of summarizing and paraphrasing. I do think this is written very well. Uh, but why you want to look ahead is look at the try this boxes and see which ones do you want to do, which ones will fit your schedule, which ones do you have the supplies for. They do try to use a lot of household supplies. We are not the type of household that has all household supplies on hand at any given day. Um, so that's something I do recommend that you look ahead and check on. At the end of a lesson, they will have a larger project, and this is super fun, of course, lava lamps out of bottles and some basic supplies there. I think um, I think when my sister's doing this, I, I think I'll put in a vote for us to do this project just so that my boys, for my little boys, because I think they would get a big kick out of that. And then that's the first lesson. So you, you can expect that they will continue along like that. As you can see, we have three try this opportunities within a two page spread. That's why I say you're probably not going to do every experiment, every extension, activity, conversation, but do try to do some of them because that really is where the magic of science is and where kids tend to fall in love with science is when you do take the time, take the opportunity to get hands on, have kids see reactions in real life. I mean, that's, that's what we tend to remember from our science classes, right? Um, then the chemistry and physics notebooking journal. There are two versions. There is one for younger students and that's the junior notebooking journal that's kind of for K through second grade. In reality, then that one has less um, writing. In reality, I'm not sure that I would, uh, if, you, if you had a K through second grade student who's really into doing activities and pages and all that, you could get it. I'm, I'm not sure I'd be the first one to necessarily recommend it because at that level, if you're including a child that's younger like that, they're probably, they're really just there for the experiments, for the exposure. So this is the true kind of interactive notebooking style of learning. So after you're doing that lesson one or during lesson one, children are having the opportunity to, okay, we're going to notebook. We're going to draw a picture of one, one key concept and another key concept and we're going to write you know maybe we'll just write a sentence or two about it maybe we'll write another uh, whole paragraph about it depending on the level of your children but you are taking your own notes on the main concepts one thing i recommend for identifying main concepts they make it very easy let's see if i can find one um, they make it very easy um, to identify important words because they always bold important words keywords in the text they have a really, really good habit of doing that, helping them to stand out through. So here we have isotopes. There is a lot of vocabulary in this text. I'm, your elementary age kids are probably not going to get every single vocabulary word, and I wouldn't necessarily worry about that, um, but it is great exposure for building this vocabulary. It means later in high school when they take chemistry and physics, they're not going to be nearly so overwhelmed. So we have ways to play with the vocabulary. These crossword puzzles were actually what we have typically used kind of as our de facto test at the end of every lesson. Um, how well are they able to complete the, uh, like do they know these words well enough that they can complete these little crossword puzzles? It's a low, low pressure test in that way. There is biblical copy work because of course this is a very creation focused science study. But there's also some like kind of extra fun things and it's more in the back of the notebook where you see all the super cool little projects and this is where I think the notebook really shines is in these pockets and flip books and really cool stuff you get to make. These are my favorites. We all have favorites, right? <laughs> Tab books, get to cut out, write stuff, conduction, convection. See, there's a lot of words. There's a lot of vocabulary in this. <laughs> 
that's one of the reasons I do recommend this more for higher Ooh, colors within light. So there's all sorts of, see, these are all, these are all the pieces, the cutout pieces that will go on different, certain more interactive pages within your notebook. You will notice this notebook is huge. Um, there's a lot in here, probably not, most people are not going to do nearly all of it, but I would definitely recommend not skipping it because I think there's a lot in here to really take the information off the page and have your child do something with that information, produce something with that information that's really going to be um, helpful. There are uh, review questions from the different lessons, the what do you remember questions. You could opt to do these orally or have your children write down the answers and the age of your child is probably going to be part of what um, helps you make that decision. There are uh, experiment related pages, um, but it's pretty, there's a lot of consistent similar activities from one lesson to the next, which is nice, you know what to expect, but there is also some interactivity and variety in the book. So I hope that you found that flip through helpful. If you are thinking about using this curriculum, definitely let me know if you have any questions about it down below. I wanted to speak from our experience of using this as well as other Exploring Creation um, resources before from this Young Explorers series. And I'll be seeing you next time. Bye.